so in continuation to the uh, second lecture uh, this is uh, our third lecture on re gene replication so we were uh, at a position where we were discussing uh, elongation phase of replication so in the elongation phase uh, one of the strand uh, that is this one uh, let me take some color okay this strand has this this end five prime end and this end three prime end. Uh, so the DNA synthesis we know that it occurs in five prime to three prime direction. So this newly synthesized DNA has no problem with with its directionality. Whereas uh, synthesis going on in the other strand, opposite strand, uh, will have a directional problem because synthesis will always occur from five prime to three prime direction. This was first time seen by Okazaki. Reiji Okazaki, uh, who observed, uh, you know, who could interpret that uh, if uh, it had not been so, then um, then uh, DNA polymerase must be there, with, which, which can synthesize even in three prime to five prime direction. But but it is known that there is no such DNA polymerase. So uh, it was quite true that uh, synthesis has to occur in a fragmented manner in the in one of the strands. Uh, in this strand that is called lagging strand uh, because the um, uh, the helicase it will open the helix um, um, towards uh, upstream uh, of this replication fork the replication fork will move in one direction and um, the gap that will be created by opening of uh, opening up of the helix that gap will be synthesized um, will be will be primed again and a new DNA will be synthesized to fill that gap and this will continue over and over uh, until the replication ends, uh, reaches the termination site. Uh, however, uh, another mechanism making the continuation of these Okazaki fragments also goes on parallelly. So, if you want to detect whether these Okazaki fragments are really being formed or not, you need to have um, uh, either of the two systems. You have to level the DNA, you have to pulse chase. You have to level this newly formed DNA for a transient period of time before it gets ligated in, at the time of continuation by DNA pol 1. Or you will have to have a, a, a mutant, like ligase mutant. You have to have a ligase negative mutant by which uh, that will be unable to ligate these two fragments. And so you can generate fragmented, you can get this fragmented uh, DNA leveled. They will never get ligated. Uh, proving the presence of these Okazaki fragments further. So, uh, in both the way, uh, Reiji Okazaki, they proved that uh, by pulse chasing, uh, first of all, by pulse chasing this uh, DNA, newly synthesized DNA, uh, they could produce, uh, uh, they, they saw that uh, in the ultra centrifuge, they saw a lighter band, a band on the top side. Uh, in the in this, uh, density gradient, which was representative of smaller size DNA, and there were some larger size DNA also. As the time increased, the larger size DNA amount increases because ligation uh, completes this uh, converts these smaller fragments into larger fragments. Uh, this was further proved uh, when they uh, did the same thing with the ligase negative mutant. This was uh, actually a T4 Fudge DNA that, that they took for, for this experiment because it was easy to get ligase mutants, T4 ligase mutants in this system. So when, when the ligase mutants were uh, pulse chased with treated thymidine, uh, what happened is that this band was missing. Whatever the, the there were only were smaller sized DNA bands. This band, this, this band was only present because the ligase enzyme was not uh, was incorrect, so it was incapable of uh, ligating these fragments into the longer fragments. That's why this band was missing, proving further that this is not because of any artifact. So this is how you can prove that the DNA uh, the DNA replication in in the lag lagging strand occurs in a fragmented or discontinuous way. But how it is made continuous, we can see that. Suppose this is the lagging strand with this end 3 prime and this end 5 prime. Uh, this is suppose this is the primer. 
for one of the fragments and this is the newly synthesized DNA. Uh, this is the uh, not newly synthesized rather it is on one Okazaki fragment and another Okazaki fragment is behind this like this. So there are so many Okazaki fragments one after another. We can uh, illustrate this using this one example. So this end of the uh, Okazaki fragment is 3 prime end, this end of the primer is 5 prime, this end of the primer is 3 prime and this is 3 prime. So what happens? Uh, a, a DNA pole 1 that comes and sits here. As we know this is DNA pole 1, DNA polymerase 1 rather. It has got uh, uh, a 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity. It has also got uh, a 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity and uh, of course uh, 3 prime to 5 prime proofreading activity will also be there which is also an exonuclease activity. So by this 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity this DNA uh, polymerase 1 it chews off this primer one, up, one by one removing one by one nucleotides and by this activity of the pi, pi prime to 3 prime polymerase it, it adds up new DNA into the this 3 prime end. So the NIC the NIC that proceeds like the NIC moves like this. This process is called NIC translation. It's the when the DNA pol 1 it uh, moves in this direction it removes the primer the RNA primer and that is being replaced by a DNA synthesis now. This part is replaced by a DNA by polymerase activity uh, and the DNA pole 1 adds uh, nucleotides in 3 prime end here and that's why it gets extended and it finally reaches to the 5 prime end of this DNA hmm. and then this 3 prime and 5 prime ends are ligated with the help of another enzyme called ligase. So ligase seals this gap. So finally what is produced is that continuous DNA which you cannot distinguish in fact. So this is a continuous DNA. So this is how uh, DNA pol 1 and ligase together make the Okazaki fragments continuous. Now uh, there is another question wh whether whether this fork, these two forks, uh, these two strands, synthesis in the two strands go in opposite direction? No, the fork moves in this direction, so synthesis has to occur in this direction. What happens, uh, in fact, is this that the uh, the lagging strand. So let me make it a little thicker. So what happens? The lagging strand it actually folds like this okay so this is 3 prime end this is 5 prime end this is 5 prime end and this is 3 prime end synthesis was uh, going on in this continuously and it continues further and here what happens uh, new DNA synthesized using primers like this, the, the DNA synthesis also goes in the same direction. Say so this part of the DNA has already been synthesized. So this is one Okazaki fragment, this is another Okazaki fragment and another primase is sitting here to make another primer which will further be used when, when this part of the DNA, when this, this part of the DNA needs to be replicated, this fork, this uh, loop will move further the helicase will continue on this side opening a newer part of this DNA okay the topo isomer is sitting on the back side as the name suggests it it, uh, it uh, modifies the topology of the DNA in the background in the back side of this replication for what happens the DNA gets entangled the DNA forms uh, different types of structure, secondary structures like this so it has to be removed by and the topo isomerase can do that. This is topo isomerase, also called gyrase. So the activity of gyrase is to 
is to relax the gyration of the DNA. The DNA polymerase actually forms a dimer and it sits on as this on this. This is the alpha subunit and uh, the beta subunit remains at the front of this and there are a number of other subunits that associate uh, probably with the help of theta subunit these two dimers are assembled and both of them uh, move on in one direction towards the fork not in opposite direction what happens that this lagging strand has to fall back like this okay so now the dna replication continues until the until the dna has reached the termination site in case of prokaryotes you know there are the dna is circular so suppose replication has started here and it will end somewhere maybe at this position so there are for termination to occur in e coli there are seven tar sites these are called tar sites tar and this this protein this dna within this dna sequence is called tar and this protein is called tus so a tar tus complex is formed this is the tar site say from here to here and a protein that is associated with this this is tus so this will be called this is tar sequence so a tar tus complex is being formed uh, that acts as a pause for the DNA replication. So replication will come and will terminate here. So after the termination, what happens is the result is uh, two catenated DNA. One DNA is like this, or another DNA, it, it is uh, entangled like this, a catenated person. So there are two theories that explain how they are relaxed. According to one theory, uh, this uh, interlock, this interlock is uh, removed by the activity of topo two. In fact, topo four is one kind of uh, topo two-like activity having double strand break mechanism. So the chromosome of one of the sorry if space is there. The chromosome one of the double strand of uh, one of the replicon is broken by like this with the help of the poisomerase sitting here somewhere here and the other dna the other dna is removed through this it passes from this it comes out through this and becomes uh, these two these two ends are later on joined, completing the two replicons replication of the two replication. Another hypothesis says that uh, this part of the DNA contains uh, a sequence called deep sequence. Deep sequence. It is just like a at sequence attachment sequence of uh, plasmids or lambda fudge. Deep sequences are basically. 15 nucleotide or 15 base pair long sequences that have homology with each other. So a kind of a site specific recombination occurs uh, with the help of a ZER-C enzyme which is basically a site specific recombinase uh, at a chi site is created here this part and this part they recombine forming a chi separate structure also called holiday junction so this holiday junction is created okay this holiday junction as according to the holiday model it undergoes 180 degree rotation and with the help of another enzyme zrd is relaxed or resolved into two separate chromosomes by cleavage and rejoining. So this is how these two DNA molecules get separated in, in termination. So that's all about DNA replication in these three video lectures. I think the whole story will be clear to you. Thank you very much.